gamers today i am back with another piece of content another video and this time a little guide video for you guys as the title says it's going to be army composition and its counters in aoe4 so very often i get asked how do you beat x or y how do you beat knights with this how do you beat knights with this and luckily in aoe4 we have a rock paper scissor counter system so it's very easy for me to tell you how to do stuff and and you know how to counter but i'm gonna give you every sim single example so for example one of the uh most basic comps especially if you play ladder is gonna be the knight plus archer so knight is your like carry unit uh and archers are the support units and all they gotta do is they gotta kill the spearman and then you're good to go now when you do this combo you can add spearmen if the opponent also has knights but if the opponent does not have knights you can just stick with this combo and you can be pretty much good to go with everything when you play against this combo there are two variations you can uh, be fighting it with you can go for the overwhelm kind of uh, comp where you go horseman plus spearmen so you want to basically aim with your spearmen um, on top of the knights and you want to get the horsemen on top of the archers the other combo that you can do is archer plus spearmen against knights plus archers so you're going to use your archers to kill the enemy archers as the defending player and then you're going to use your spearmen to defend against knights now your unit comp dictates quite a bit based on what you're doing or what you want to do so what i mean by this in AoE 4, if you want to be aggressive uh, in AoE 4, it doesn't matter what civ you, uh, you want to go. I mean, if you if you have knights in feudal, you always want to go knights. So if you're playing Malian and you got sofas, um, you know, they're very good. If you play French or Rus or Mongol for Kashyyyk, you always want to go for those units. Unless you're the one that's defending. So the cavalry is obviously very strong horsemen or knights but you want to go cavalry when you plan to harass or you plan to attack the opponent when defending you're not going to have as much food uh, at your disposal so if you go cavalry you're actually going to run out of food very very quickly so what you want to do is if you're the defending player you want to go for spearman archer most of the time or if you are uh, maybe you know one TC versus one TC you're fighting on on the map You can go for like horse and spearman versus this but in general it kind of depends whether you're being aggressive or defensive players So again, one of the most common comps is knight archer. You can play this against it Let me split it like this So if you're playing against this, you can either go for this unit comp or this unit comp if you're being more defensive. And the reason why this comp is more popular against this one is because archers are cheap on food, spearmen are cheap on food, so you usually win by just having too, too, like too many units compared to your opponent and you can kind of uh, engage that way. Now, if the opponent is uh, uh, going for... Knightmen, uh, knights plus archer like i said horsemen on archers uh you want to put spearmen on the knights as much as possible and you know it's, it's all a micro battle at that point now if you're playing against um if you're playing defensively from spearman archer side what you want to do is you want to take your archers and you want to target fire the french archers right you want to make sure you snipe the archers so that your spearmen can clean up the knights so this is usually like a micro battle if you ever watched uh, my stream or someone else's stream it usually becomes a micro battle where it's like the archers are in front and then the knights have to come in to push back the archers then you pull out your spears in the front the moment the knights go back you send your spearmen back because you don't want them to die to the enemy archer so it's just kind of this little little micro battle now if you are not playing a knight sail let's say you don't have access to knights you're playing you know whatever abbasid or you know whatever other civ that that just doesn't have a horseman uh one of the most common things that we are seeing recent at the top level play is people open with cavalry so they can harass and put some pressure on the opponent then the opponent so you open with let's say like this 
Let me make a nice visual. So you open with cavalry, horsemen. You do some harassment. Because you open with cavalry, the opponent has to make spearmen, right? Because you know they have to make spearmen, because it's logical, right? Then you start producing archers. Because you're producing archers, usually the opponent will now have to uh, add archers, most likely. Because if they start adding horsemen, they're just going to have too few to be able to contest you. But some civs do that. You know, they, they make some horsemen. And then, because they are on horseman spearmen, you're on horseman archer, then this player is going to add spears, and this player is going to add archers. So they kind of come to the same point. And this has become very, very popular. And uh, it, it's like when you have your production up, you go like two stables, two barracks, and two archer ranges. Now again, if you are an aggressive player and you like attacking, going horseman plus archer, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, this is a comp that's very, very popular and you can use your cavalry to harass and once you're re ready for the main battle, you use your archers to pick up spearmen and then your cavalry takes care of the rest. So that's kind of the basic idea and you always, always, it's, it's very hard counter type units in AOE4. So you always want to put your spearmen onto the cavalry your archers onto the spear, spearmen, and then your uh, cavalry onto the archers, unless you're playing with knights, which with then you can also fight spearmen if you have like decent amount of knights fighting into it. So that's kind of the basic idea. Now, um, that's as far as feudal goes. Uh, there are some obviously unique units uh, that some civs have. Like Gazi Raiders or Kashyyyk, you play exactly like uh, Kashyyyk, you play like you would play against Knights. Gazi Raiders, you play like you would against Horsemen, same thing with Sipahi. English Longbows, if uh, whenever you play against English, for example, the best unit comp is to go Horsemen because they have Longbows. Once you go Horsemen uh, or Knights, they will go Spearmen, then you go Archers. So when you, whenever you play against English, it's usually Spearmen Longbow versus... Um, cavalry plus archers that is kind of the standard and it doesn't make sense for english to add horsemen because the longbows have extra range and extra damage so they just stick to it you stick to your cavalry archers and it becomes a micro battle and then later on english might add men at arms which are uh decently expensive and you can just win by overwhelming them then you have um, civs like Malian, where they have javelin throwers. So javelin throwers uh, are obviously countering archers really hard, but you still want to make archers against Malian. The reason for that is, if Malian goes for javelin thrower Donzos, you need cavalry to kill javelin throwers, but then you need archers to kill the Donzos, right? So even though you're kind of making archers into javelin throwers, you kind of have to. You don't really have a you don't really have a choice. So. Um, that's kind of how the feudal battles work. Uh, I'm going to age up if I have any workers here. Uh, let's go guild hall, whatever. So now I'm going to upgrade all the units and let's talk about the crossbows and how that changes things. And men at arms, of course. So how do you decide what unit comp to go for, right? Like, this is something that people don't really know or they get tunnel vision into one thing and they don't know when to transition or what to do. So for example, um, if I'm playing French, right? This is my army, I'm now in castle. With French, you actually don't need to change your unit comp at all because knights are very strong. You have your harassment type units and then you make archers to kill uh, the enemy spearmen. Now, if th th like that's kind of your bread and butter, right? Now, if the opponent starts adding their own knights and stops making spearmen, what you should do is add crossbows because crossbows, hard counter armored units, or if they're making like gulams or men at arms, you can still go knights because men at arms do not counter knights, but you can add crossbows for more damage, for more DPS. If the enemy is not making any spearmen or crossbows, you don't need to continue making archers. Uh, if the enemy is making spearmen uh, crossbow in order to counteract your, your knights, then your archer should be able to demolish that army completely. So you should always kind of stick to your original comp and then build units based on what is countering your comp, right? So that's is if you're French. Let's say I am, uh, let's say I am playing Abbasid, right? 
and let's say I'm aging up and I age up and now my comp is Spearman Archer. So what is the unit that would counter that? Right? The enemy should make men at arms against that. Because that is the only if, if the enemy makes knights, you have spearmen. If the enemy makes crossbows or archers, you have your own archers. So the only logical thing for the enemy to make is mangorels or men at arms. So in that case, you can start adding some gulams over your of your own and make some crossbows so that you have a, a little bit of everything. And if you at any point you notice that the enemy is going for a mangonel and you're let's say abbasid you can just make a springle immediately and that way you cover all the vulnerabilities of your of your of your comp um now if you have been playing like um archer horseman and you age up because you're going for cavalry archer combo you can stay with horsemen but usually when you play with civs that don't have access to knights and feudal and then you age up to castle you usually upgrade your horsemen if you have like more than 10 it's worth upgrading them to veteran and then you can just start producing knights instead and still produce archers or crossbows or whatever else because um if you can do if you can produce knights you will produce knights right um and that's why a lot of civs that don't have knights once they reach castle they go away from horsemen to uh, two knights because they're just stronger and better obviously they're more expensive but you know it is what it is and then you already have your archers to protect them because if you continue making a horseman in castle the enemy can add men at arms and then horsemen are not going to do too great against them but knights will take care of those so that you kind of soft counter them with your knights and your archers can still do whatever they got to do so in general you want to add crossbows if you're fighting knights into knights or if your opponent is going into man at arms or something like that but if the opponent is just sticking to light infantry or uh, you know sticking with horsemen you don't need crossbows so that's kind of how you you build up on your original um original unit comp right um like for example when an english player goes spearman longbow and they age up to castle they will make some extra spearmen right just in case the enemy has cavalry or still or ghost cavalry but they will usually transition into men at arms because their men at arms are very strong so they're gonna go into men at arm longbow crossbow unit comp and then because they know okay well if i go men at arms the enemy has to go crossbows they usually continue making longbows so they can snipe out your crossbows right so there's a lot of that in age of empires 4 where you have to adjust in the moment and um that's why I said there's a lot of like hard countering. So if your unit comp, no matter what civ, um, or let's say your opponent's unit comp is very archer based and you don't have the numbers or you can't quite deal with them yet, one of the best things you can do is just make a mangonel. So sometimes a mangonel can buy you a lot of time. So if if your unit comp is is this, let's say, uh, let me make these. If this is your unit comp, you got a lot of crossbows, a lot of archers, and you got a lot of spearmen. All these units get countered by archers, simply, right? All these. They're all light units. So, one of the strongest ways to supplement your army with something really good that's going to help you is like two mangonels. Because the only thing that counters this is going to be like pure archer or mangonels from the enemy. Which is usually why when Abbasid plays, they go for a lot of infantry and then they start making siege because the Abbasid army is very, very strong. And then the only thing that can kind of beat you is going to be the enemy mangonel or just pure archer or something like that, right? So you want to kind of cover whatever is is possible to, to kind of just kill you or blind counter you completely. Now, on the other side, if you play this comp and the enemy themselves makes um, mangonels then the first thing you need to do is get a couple of springles to protect your mass especially if their unit comp is like knight crossbow and then they have two mangonels as long as you take care of the mangonels your units are going to be able to take care of anything else um so yeah that's kind of that's kind of how that goes now um again uh regarding which units to go for castle you know, I just explained, depending what opponent goes, what you go, what you want to play, yada yada. But at the same time, uh, even in castle, if you are going to be aggressive, I would suggest sticking with cavalry or more mobile units. If you want to be defensive, 
more ranged units into Springolds and then like Spearman Man at Arm is better because those are slower units, they're cheaper, they allow you to spend the resources somewhere else. Um, kind of while while developing your economy like it doesn't really make sense to make a bunch of knights and then use them to defend um because they're that's that's not what they're used for knights or horsemen are not really good in straight up fights unless you can like overwhelm your opponent or you have enough archers to kill their um to kill your spearmen to kill their spearmen I saw a question in the chat. How do you make sure or how do you um, make it so that the archers don't overkill? So um, If this is enemy's army These spearmen right here number two If this is enemy army If I shoot right now with these archers here Most of the archers are gonna hit these two spearmen and that's a, that's gonna be a big overkill so one of the best ways to not overkill units is use line formation. Now when I aim move, these units are all going to get hit and most likely all of them will die. So line formation is very good, especially if you're kiting. It's very easy to kite, shoot, kite, shoot, kite, and so on and so forth. Um, on the other hand, if you use this formation, you will be all killing a lot because sometimes, not, some, not sometimes, always, if these spearmen were to chase the archers, sometimes one spearman gets in front like this, right? They kind of make like a weird, you know? So now if they attack and you're shooting, all the archers are gonna shoot this spearman right here and you're overkilling massively, massively, massively. And you're wasting a lot of damage potential, right? But if you're split, even if the unit is like that, not every archer will now hit that spearman, right? Some archers are going to hit this spearman right here. Some archers are going to hit this spearman. So you want to maximize your damage without, like, mitering too much. Now, obviously, if you have the APM, what you can do is take, like, this group of archers and then shift-click on, uh, like this, on the spearman. Take this group, shift click on the spearmen, and then take this group and then shift click uh, like that so that you make sure you're killing three spearmen every volley, right? Now, um, what else? Let's go to Imperial. So what is your ultimate comp? And this is another thing I get asked very often. What is the best unit comp in the game? Well, if you have infinite amount of gold, like I'm talking you're trading or you got so many relics or I don't know. If you have infinite amount of gold, the best unit comp you can go for is pure knight hand cannoneer. Hand cannoneer have the highest DPS in the game and knights have highest amount of stats per supply. Which means like they have highest amount of armor and health per one supply. So if you make two of those units, the knights will be able to do quite a bit. They're going to be able to tank quite a bit. Let me get the university upgrades too. Boom, 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 boom. So now knights will have 364 health, plenty of armor. Let me get blacksmith stuff as well. There we go. So if you have infinite amount of gold, hand cannoneer plus knight is the best way to go. Now, usually when you hit the Imperial, unless you're playing like Nomad or something, you're not gonna have gold to support these two uh, units because they're very, very expensive. Like Knights are um, 140 and then 100 gold and Hand Kunineers are 120, 120. So this is why you need to have like 40, 50 farms and then you need to have traders as well to be able to sustain um, this kind of production. Again, if you go from Castle to Imperial, you don't want to like switch your army comp completely and ditch the old one. You just want to make sure that whenever you age up, if you have more than 10 units of one type. So if I have 10 horsemen or 11 horsemen, uh, well, actually for Imperial, you probably want to have at least like 20 units. Like if I have 20 archers or 20 crossbows, it's worth upgrading them because they will get a lot of stats. And then you can kind of continue with the unit comp that you've been going with. Like if it's going well, if it's countering your enemy, then just continue with those units. If the enemy is tech switching, then you have to tech switch. Um, you have to tech switch as well. Um, in the late game uh, as well, regarding Siege, 
how do you counter mangonels? How do you counter bombards? How do you counter springles? Now, sometimes you can get into these weird situations if the map is like split like this. Um, I'm actually wall like this. So sometimes you're gonna have a game like this, right? Where you're fully walled and then what do you do? You know, like what unit do you what units do you go for? Um, and that's a question that a lot of people don't know, right? And if there's stone walls and there's keeps and there's towers and all this shit, people don't know what to do because they're like, okay, my enemy has six mangonos, seven mangonos, and it's like, how do I beat that? Well, the only way to, to beat it, uh, not the only way, but one of the ways to beat it is to make springles. So if suddenly you have springles, right? You have eight springles and they got eight mangonos, let's say. They're obviously gonna get absolutely destroyed. So if you go springles, they have mangonos, you can just shift click, snipe the mangonos and your army can evaporate everything else, right? Simple enough. They both cost three supply, so neither player is going to have more supply. Now, if the enemy has mangonos and then they make 10 springles, right? Now you are officially into a siege battle. Siege battles are usually when it's like the map is kind of split, and let's say you're both fighting through this choke, right? Everything else is walled off for some reason, you can't engage, and this is the only uh, place you guys can fight. So now, his army will beat yours, right? Because you have 8 Springles, they have 10, so if they micro well, they're going to be able to defeat your army, and then Mangalos are going to demol demolish everything else. Now, this is where tech switching in A4 comes in handy. This army right here is 18, it's 54 supply, okay? Let's assume that your enemy has 120 villagers. I mean, I don't know, what. depending what league you are, the enemies might have more or less supply. But let's say they have 100 supply, fuck it, of workers. And they got 54 uh, supply of siege. Now, what is the problem with that? Well, that's not a lot of supply for the rest of the units. So what you can do is try to trade out your springles for his siege. And if you kill some of the siege, the enemy will replace that siege. And then that's when you remax on pure cavalry. Um, like mass horsemen into maybe men at arms because mangonels are not good against those units so let's say the opponent has hand cannoneer mangonel springle that's their unit comp like it's like a death army even though you will lose the first fight what you need to do in order to beat that army is not necessarily make more springles you can right you can make more springles but the easiest way to defeat it is trade out Try not to lose your whole army and then have, and this is why you want a lot of production in the lane game. If you remax with like 30, 40 horsemen and some men at arms, you will be able to completely overwhelm the enemy army. And this type of army, like Mass Mangonel, Springled, and Hank Canoneer, is very, very difficult to replace because this army cost is like batshit insane. So the enemy will not be able to just remax again with the same stuff. Then they will need to make spearmen. Uh, you know or knights in order to be able to counter your army so then you're away from that siege trap already right you you kind of broke through the initial death ball and after that the opponent can just make springles again because there's horsemen everywhere running around so yes you can enter siege war go springle versus springle but a better way is to just do a massive tech switch now this works for anything um if you know, your opponent catches you off guard and you have, let's say, archer men at arm for some reason. In Imperial, you have that. And the enemy comes out with 80 uh, knights, right? You can go for same comp, but it's not going to be very good. So what you want to do is remax with like spearman hand cannoneer, maybe like a pure counter to that. And once the opponent sees that, they will start or they should make something else in order to counteract your army. And this is how Imperial battles are usually fought where it's like you have to adjust in the moment. Um, there's no unit comp in Imperial that's like, this is what I go no matter what. Because even if you go for the unit comp that I mentioned earlier, like a Spearman, Henkin, or a Henkin on your knight, um, 
again if you have infinite resources that's probably the best one to go for but the enemy can potentially go for like mass spearmen plus mangonel and then mangonels are gonna ki kill hand cannoneers and the spearmen are gonna take care of the knights so there's always like this back uh, back and forth and there is no best comp best comp is the counter to your opponent's army so whatever your opponent is making you make a counter to that that is your best unit comp and that can be different every game now obviously there's you know 10 sieves soon there's going to be 16 uh so um some sieves have unique units so you need to know like how to deal with those which units to make but usually it's like the rock paper scissors system of like spearman cavalry uh archer type and then you have like crossbows and men at arms men at arms counter archers and spearmen and so on and so forth um but you kind of get the point now one important thing is whenever you're fighting against mangonels I'll, I'll just give you guys this advice because i see this mistake very very often whenever the opponent um has like mangonels like this what i see people do is they select their arm and they just a move you know how units like stack up like this a little bit and then mango shoot here and your whole army is dead this is how you should be engaging with against mangonels so let's say uh let me get some men-at-arms let me get some men-at-arms and then show you guys so if the enemy mangonels are right here and let's say they have you know they have other units with them obviously it's not just seven or eight mangonels and nothing else don't engage like this this is how you lose the game immediately you lose the game immediately even if you go like this okay if you a move you will get splashed quite a bit and you're gonna you're gonna get dented the way you want to engage into mangoes don't think that this is not engageable just because it's eight mangoes this is more than fine to run into i run into uh, like four or five mangoes all the time what you want to do is run in but not a move with c formation with staggered formation okay if i do staggered formation and a move my units will stack again and we're gonna have the same problem if you aim move they're gonna basically end up in this position because the moment they get in range to shoot they're gonna stack so what you want to do is you want to go like this and this a move until or move command until you get close and then you aim move because then look at your archers they're all spread out so even if mangonels are shooting they're only getting three or four archers per shot and because all your archers are in range they're not stacking okay now obviously there's uh there's that and there's also the good old if you have horsemen what you can do is while you do that at the same time you can shift click horsemen and then shift click onto the mangonels and they're gonna kind of take care of them and you can also use the the stagger formation on them too so yeah uh th there's multiple ways to counter uh every unit comp in the game and a lot of it comes to micro um whether it's in feudal or or castle or um or imperial now i actually thought about doing a micro guide as well because i have a lot of build order guides and i have i mean i don't really know how to do a macro guide because macro guide is kind of like a build order guide in a way but i was thinking about doing a ma uh, micro guide something like this that i just showed you um where you know like tips basically how to fight different units and all that what if they have units blocking uh well that doesn't matter your your goal is to engage into mangonels without stacking and losing everything if they have eight mangonels that's 24 supply okay that's 24 supply that they're working with so this is 24 archers obviously i i i'm using archers right Th uh, these archers could be hand cannoneers right in that case that's a lot stronger army but that's a lot of units in mangonels that die very quickly the moment you uh, units get on top of them and again if you're fighting with men at arms and crossbows and archers into mangonels you're fighting with very cheap units into a lot more expensive units so even if you kill half of the mangonels and you kill a lot of his army and then you lose his army uh, you lose your army and you kill like half of his you'll be able to remax easier because your units are cheaper what do you do against 10 has to be same thing you can make 
two springles and you kill 10 SWBs. Or if the enemy is also making springles, you just go mass cavalry and you just kill everything. Um, another way to abuse siege, uh, if the enemy is going for shit on a siege, is just don't fight into it. It's, it's really that simple. If your opponent has mass siege here, break a wall on this side and run in 40 knights in the back of the base and just kill all the workers. And that's it. And then by, you know, that enemy is going to be like, oh shit, I got to pull my units back. And then they're going to forget Nest of Bees once and then you run in and kill all Nest of Bees. So, yeah. That's kind of how the army comps in A4 work. Um, again, start with the, the simple one. Do you want to be aggressive? Do you want to be passive? If you want to be aggressive, cavalry is always the best way to go about it because it gets to the enemy base very quickly. If you go cavalry, the enemy will obviously go for arch, uh, sorry, spearmen, in which case you go for archers. Uh, now, if you want to be aggressive against, uh, this is why the knight sieves, by the way, I forgot to mention this, the knight sieves are usually the aggressive ones, because if you go like horsemen against French and they go knights, if they just continue, they don't need to make spearmen, they can just continue making knights and beat your horsemen. And that's kind of where the problem lies. You might have some kind of awkward situation where you open horsemen, the enemy goes knights, and then you need to add spears in order to beat his knights because obviously horsemen will be losing to that. So, um, yeah. But in general, uh, have a game plan, have a unit comp you want to go for. And if majority of your army is, you know, um, archers, make sure you have enough spearmen to... Uh, cover for them from the enemy cavalry. If majority of your army is spearmen, make sure you have something to kill the enemy archers, and so on and so forth. What's the best way to body block on siege? I mean, simply by, like, let's say you have three mangoes here. I'm gonna show this and then we're gonna end it there. So if you have three mangoes right here, let's say the horsemen are coming from this side, right? The best way to defend your siege is just do this. Get on top of them and then you can press V so the enemy can't get to them. AKA V is the, the whole position or standing ground. So now the enemy is going to have a lot of harder time engaging. Or you can do one of these as well. Um, if the enemy is coming you can use um, staggered formation. And then do one of these. So you stagger formation and then you unclick it and then as they're coming closer you put hold ground. So now you get much bigger radius on the blocking. How often do you use stand ground? Very often. I mean, every game many, many times. So yeah, that's it. Those are the army compositions and um, how to counter each one of them. I would also suggest after watching this video, if you're still maybe uh, like unsure about something or you wanna see it in action, uh, just watch like any uh, pro game uh, watch you know my stream or any other stream where uh, top players are playing and you will see what I'm talking about like the way they move their army the way they open up with units the way they immediately counter what the opponent is doing without really like scouting it sometimes because they know that it's coming in advance stuff like that if you're watching on YouTube I want to thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video check me out on Twitch I'm probably live right now micring my units if you're watching on Twitch let's keep going